भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सदिगौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा डियर डिवोर इज फॉर्चुनेट सोल्स डूइंग भक्ति वे ऑफ स्टडी ऑफ फर्स्ट कैंट ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम विथ मायापुर इंस्टीट्यूट यू आर ऑल वेलकम वी आर टूडे स्टार्टिंग द फोर्टीन चैप्टर ऑफ फर्स्ट कैंट ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम एंड द चैप्टर इज एन टाइटल दिस अपियरेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण सो दिस फर्स्ट कैंटो हैज ए one thing is special that this canto was compiled and written by shri prabhupad before iskan was established so most of the places you will not find generally the term krishna consciousness as frequently as in the upcoming other cantos and the editing and everything is done in india and shri prabhupada has done this work here right in bindavan and when uh, some of his old god brother brothers and sadhus in bindavan he say why you are going at this old age of 70 to western country this i am not going shrimad bhagwat is shrimad bhagwatam is going i am simply going as a servant of bhagavatam just to assess bhagavat so actually it is the bhagavatam first ganto which is started from vrindavan and prabhupad accompanied bhagavatam and distributed bhagavatam and established krishna conscious movement so this uh, 14th chapter it has couple sections so we can see the sections in the uh chapter 14 so chapter 14 has i think uh four or five sections so first we see what are the sections or oh, there are first 10 verses 1 to 10 Maharaj Yudhishthir suspects disappearance of Lord Krishna. So what he was seeing, he was seeing certain omens of when, and he was really concerned about that. So one to ten verses, Maharaj Yudhishthir suspect disappearance of Lord Krishna, and then next ten verses, almost eleven to twenty. Further bad omens experienced by Maharaj Yudhishthir, which uh, he is sharing with uh, his younger brother Bhimsen, because the uh, third brother Arjun was already sent by him to Dwarka to know about Krishna's future plans. So, by the verse twenty one. Arjun is arriving back, and verse twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. These verses described Arjun's appearance in the assembly of Maharaj Yudhishthir. And the next section, twenty-five to thirty-three verses. is yudhishthir maharaj inquire about welfare of dwarka friends and relatives and ultimately by 39 verse arjun is asking about arjun's welfare why he is dejected and having his head cast down and tears in his eyes 
and this section goes from 39 to 43 and the last verse Yudhishthira Maharaj concludes that all this is because Lord Krishna has departed from this planet so in this way this is 44 verses chapter having almost six main section and the last verse as a seven separate item and the next chapter will start by Sutta Goswami describing Arjun's condition and then Arjun start answering the question so we are starting the uh, first question Sutta Vacha so this is a dialogue between the Sutta Goswami and Sanakadi Rishi so overview of the whole first canto 19 chapters there are three dialogues the first three chapter is a dialogue between Sutta Goswami and Sanakadi Rishi and the main concern is the welfare work for the people of Kali Yuga. The next three chapters, 4, 5 and 6, is a Narad Vyasa Samvad. And their main concern is, Vyasadeva was not satisfied by all Vedic literature. But the next 12 chapter actually glorifies the, the, the real listener of Bhagavatam. So these three dialogue means three listener and a speaker. Shrota Vakta Nirupan is actually first canto is establishing who is the best listener of, ba of Bhagavatam and that is Maharaj Parikshat. So to glorify Maharaj Parikshat there are the description of three mother side of Maharaj Parikshat Mahabhagavata Kunti Uttara and Drupati and then his father side Bhisham Pitama's say, prayers to Krishna before his departure then the glories of uh, Pandva's rule and then then even Dhritarashtra 13th chapter even Dhritarashtra got liberated and now Parikshat Maharaj himself is going to appear and then then his glorious uh, conquering the Kali Yuga having a darshan of Krishna before his birth and the last one chapter is the speaker of Bhagavatam Sukhdev Goswami appears so now this chapter Yudhishthar Maharaj say Sutta Goswami is telling some Prasthate Dwarkayam Jishnu Bandhu Didikshaya Gyatam Chapunya Shlokasya Krishna Sacha Vicheshtitam. So Jishnu is a one of the name of Arjun, and Arjun has a very important, at least I, I would say they say the eight names of Arjun. And one of the one important name of Arjun is Jishnu. So Jishnu means Arjun was sent to Dwarka by Yudhishthira Maharaj about Bandhu Didriksha to see the relatives. And also, and also what is the what is the reason? There are two reasons for which Arjun was sent to Dwarka. So what are the two reasons? See, uh, gyatum cha punya shloka. So next is to know gyatum punya shloka Krishna. Punya shloka means one who is glorified by choices to and very glorious verses. Krishna sya vicheshtitam, which means what is the further program of Krishna. It means actually their whole life was simply to be the instrument for Krishna's plan. 
So Srila Prabhupada translates Sri Shruta Goswami said, Arjun went to Dwarka to see Lord Krishna and other friends and also to learn from Lord of his next activities. So the next translation which as you see on the screen is the first and second words by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. When Arjun went to Dwarka to see his friends and understand the activities and intention of famous Krishna, this famous word is for this word famous is for what? Punya Shloka. He did not return for some months. Yudhishthar saw an auspicious omen at that time. So this is the verse 2 which we will read. So one thing which uh, generally I would like to request to see Srila Prabhupada's translation. Arjun went to Dwarka to see Lord Krishna and other friends and also learn, to learn from Lord of the next activities. So sometimes you do little exercise to see which word in the Sanskrit Srila Prabhupada has translated. Where you can see that word. Bandhu Didrikshaya to see the friends and relatives. And also to learn from Lord his next activities. Krishna sa vicheshtitam gyatum cha. Punya shloka word somehow here Punya shloka Chakravarti Vat says famous Krishna. So Chakravarti Pad writes the small uh, commentary in 14th chapter. What is in 14th chapter? Yudhishthar understand the meaning of inauspicious signs. And when he see Arjun arrive in distress, So he understood when Arjun came, he understood why the all auspicious signs were, which he was experienced, what was the reason. He went to understand, he, he went, means Arjun went to understand Krishna's activities and his intentions. Cha. Some months means seven months. Nimitani means ill omens. So it was almost seven, seven months past, Arjun was already gone to Dwarka. So Srila Prabhupada writes few lines, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, Lord descend on earth for the protection of the faithful and annihilation of the impious. Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chadushkritan. So after the battle of Kurukshetra and establishment of Maharaj Yudhishthar, Dharam Sanstapan Arthaya, so Krishna is appearing to establish the dharma and Maharaj Yudhishthar is dharma personified. The mission of Lord was complete. The Pandavas especially Sri Arjun were eternal companion of the Lord. And therefore Arjun went to Dwarka to hear from Lord of his next program of work. So here Prabhupada is saying Arjun went on his own to Dwarka with two intentions. To visit the friend and relative and to see the intention. The two words he written here is to see the intentions and activities of Krishna. So the next verse, Sutta Goswami is saying, Vethitaha Katichin Masas Tada Na Aya Tato Arjunaha. Vetita, past. Katichin Masa, some months, seven months. Tada, up, up till that time, no ayat has not come back. Tato Arjuna, Arjuna has not yet come back. Dadrisha Gora Rupani. Maharaj Yudhishthar was experiencing Gora Rupani Nimitani Kurudwaha. Kurudwaha is addressed to the, this is addressed to Maharaj Yudhishthar, the name of the Maharaj Yudhishthar. So a few months passed and Arjun did not return. Maharaj Yudhishthar then began to observe some inauspicious omens. Dadrisha Gora Rupani Nimitani which were fearful in themselves. Fearful in themselves, Gora Rupani. So Srila Prabhupada's purport. Lord Sri Krishna, Supreme Person of God, it is ad infinitum, means unlimited. More powerful than most powerful sun of our experience. Millions and millions of suns are created by him and annihilated by him within his 
वन ब्रीदिंग पीरियड व्हिच मींस करुण दक्ष है विष्णु इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड द सन इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड मटेरियल एनर्जी and only due to the sun can we have the necessities of life therefore during the personal presence of the lord on the earth all paraphernalia for our peace and prosperity especially religion and knowledge dharma gyan were in full display because of the lord's presence just as there is a full flood of light in the presence of glowing sun maharaj yudhishthir observed some discrepancies in his kingdom and therefore he became very anxious about arjun who was gone who was long absent and there was also no news about dwarka's well being he suspected disappearance of lord krishna that's important otherwise there would have been no possibility of fearful omens so shila prabhupada's purport there's a one allegory krishna and sun where there's a sun there is no darkness is all light where is a krishna there's all auspiciousness so if there is any auspiciousness it means it is lord krishna who might have left the planet so krishna is compared to the sun so when shila prabhupada is writing this purport what is in the mind of shila prabhupada is that usually when shila prabhupada is writing he has some verses actually from the scripture coming in his you know in his in his remembrance in his heart and he paraphrase those verses in a different way so which verse is coming in your mind right now when we see the comparison of krishna with the sun and where there is sun there is all light so when there is a krishna there is all auspiciousness anybody can guess the verse there is krishna samasura 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 krishna because he is writing everything is specifically from the scripture only he is giving commentary when there is something uh, in the history at that time or some geography otherwise he is always quoting the verses so this purport is like uh, why yudhishthir maharaj was singing an auspicious thing when krishna was on the planet if krishna is there on the planet there should not be any inauspicious thing that is the men purpose uh, flow now we are going to the verse number 3 kalasya cha gatim rodram kalasya cha gatim the times movement rodram very fearful viprayastarau dharami naha all the religious things were topsy turvy just upside down viprita sa just opposite papiyasim there are sinful people nirnam people vartam krodha they were very angry lob they were very greedy nirtatmanam anritta falso falsehood so these are the bad qualities when there is no krishna these things will prevail everywhere he sa mara yudhishthir sa that the direction of eternal time had changed and this was very fearful there were disruption in the seasonal regularities people in general had become very greedy angry and deceitful and he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood so he saw fearful changes of time with season appearing in a wrong order he saw sinful men engage in maintaining themselves by occupation which were characterized by anger greed and cheating so what is the change of the time what do you think what is the change of the time anybody can guess the word change of the time here means from dwapar to kali like yes it is it it appears that 
Kali's time was already arrived, but as, as long as Krishna was on the planet, Kali was not able to enter. So now Kali infiltrated, uh, and, and all these omens are there. So this is change of time means change of yuga. Time passed with the sequence of seasons being reversed. Men's livelihood, vartam, become most sinful. Varta means virti, by which virti they live. So they were living with a falsehood, cheating and all these things. Now Śrīla Prabhupāda's purport, when civilization is disconnected from loving relation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, symptom like change of seasonal regulation, foul means of livelihood, greed, anger and fraudulence become ramped. The change of seasonal regulation referred to one season's atmosphere become manifest in another season. For example, the rainy seasons being transferred to autumn are the fructification of fruits and flowers from one season in the another season. A godless man is invariably greedy, angry and fraudulent. Such man can earn his livelihood by any means, black or white. Black or white. White means honest, black means dishonest. During the reigns of Mara Yudhishthira, all the above symptoms were conspicuous by their absence. So everything was normal. But Mara Yudhishthira was astonished to experience even a slight change in the godly atmosphere of his kingdom. And at once he suspected the disappearance of Lord. Foul means of livelihood implies deviation from one's occupational duty, which means Varnashram. There are prescribed duties for everyone, such as Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. But anyone who deviates from his prescribed duty and declare another duty to be his own is following a foul and improper duty. What do you think in today's world? There's no word in one sense. It's all one Shankar. A man become too greedy for wealth and power when he has no higher objective in life. And when he thinks that this earthly life of few years is all in all. It means he has no, he have no knowledge of eternity of this soul our kingdom of God. Ignorance is the cause for all these anomalies in human society. This line needs to be noted. Ignorance is the cause for all these anomalies in human society. Ignorance of existence of God. Ignorance of the law of God. Ignorance of the existence of the soul. So the ignorance of one's own identity, the identity of Supreme Personality of Godhead and his order in the scripture, one who is ignorant of all these things, then definitely there are anomalies in human society. And to remove this ignorance, especially in this age of degradation, the powerful sun is there to distribute light in the shape of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now Śrīla Prabhupāda is comparing Bhagavatam to the sun. So where is that? Yes, where is that? Krishna Swadham Upagate Dharma Adi Gyanvya Arka Uday, Pran Arka Uday. So this Bhagavat Pran is Arka or the sun. So, so so the ignorance can be removed by following the Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada in the introduction of Bhagavatam has written, this Bhagavatam will re revolutionize the world, a spiritual revolution. And Srila Prabhupada actually proved this 
he went with bhagavatam to the western world and he revolutionized a big revolution of krishna consciousness all over the planet so what shila prabhupada is writing here at this time he has not actually started his movement he has written also in the introduction that the disturbance all over the world is uh, due to the india has not taken his responsibility is because the reason is india for the whole world's uh, disturbance and then he said why because the message of bhagavatam was not preached he has written this and then he thought anyway i have written this who will do the job i have to do the same thing i must go with bhagavatam and revolutionize the world myself and make the people happy all over the wa- world and make the peace and prosperity and spirituality so what shila prabhupada is writing in these pages he become the personal you know the person what he said he did that so verse number 4 जिहम प्रायम विहारतम शाठ्य मिश्रम च सौहृदम पितृमात्र सुहृद भ्रात्र दंपतिना च कल्कनम नाउ बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ यू ऑल हैव ए बैकग्राउंड फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द वर्ड इन संस्कृत आर इन यूअर लोकल लैंग्वेज सो take two minutes simply and take advantage of prabhupad's word to word meaning and see 90% you are know all these words jaham prayam jaham prayam cheating vihartam in all ordinary transactions satya duplicity mishram adulteration sohardam regarding friendly well wishers pitra father matra ma- mother sohard well wisher bhratra one's own brother dampatim regarding husband and wife and kalkanam mutual quarrel kali kal kalkam see all ordinary transaction and dealing become polluted with cheating jaham prayam so sometime one word is not in our common use then we can rich our vocabulary by new word jaham jaham means cheating prayam means almost even between friends and in family affairs there was always misunderstanding between father mother and sons between well wisher between brothers even between husband and wife there were always strain and quarrel what do you think 70% of the marriage in western world and in divorce chakravarti pad writes kalkanam means quarrel and other conflicts asman shlokat purvam ayam patho adiko veer raghav siddhanta deepikayo tatha कन्या विक्रणियां तातम सुतम पित्रोहो अपोक्षणं ब्राह्मणां वेद विमुखां शूद्रां वै ब्रह्मवादिनः सो दिस इज सम ट्रांसलेशन बाय वीर राघव आचार्य व्हिच इज गिवन बाय चक्रवर्ती पाद विदाउट ट्रांसलेशन कन्या गर्ल्स विक्रीणां are sold vikrina means sold tatam means by father sutam pitro apoksham sutam son pitro father apoksham brahmana veda vibhuka brahman give up the vedic knowledge sudra vai brahma vadina and the sudras they act as a brahmans these are the some symptoms 
A conditioned living being is endowed with four principles of mal practice. This is we have done in Bhakti Shastri four defect of the conditioned soul, namely error, insanity, inability, and cheating. Error means to make mistake. Mistake. Insanity means uh, illusion. Inability means uh, senses are incomplete. And cheating is uh, generally cheating. So Srila Prabhupada has used different words at that time uh, when he was translating these words. Same words uh, are differently used in a uh, uh, Sri Isha Upanishad. These signs of imperfection imperfe and out of the four, the propensity to cheat other is most prominent. And this cheating practice is there in the conditioned soul because the conditioned soul are primarily in the material world imbued with an unnatural desire to lord it over the material nature. A living being in this pure, in his pure state is not conditioned by the law. Because in his pure state he is conscious that a living being is eternally subservient to supreme being. And thus it is always good for him to remain subservient instead of falsely trying to lord it over the property of the Supreme Lord. In the conditional state, the living entity is not satisfied even if he actually becomes the lord of all that he serves, which he never become, and therefore he becomes the victim of all kinds of cheating, even with his nearest and most intimate relations. So why when somebody is cheating? What is the reason for the cheating given in this purport? Because he is not satisfied. In such an unsatisfactory state of affair, there is no harmony, even between father and son, between husband and wife. But all these containing difficulties can be mitigated by one process. And that is the devotional service of the Lord. The world of hypocrisy can be checked only by Counteraction through devotional service to the Lord and nothing else. Mahara Yudhishthira, having observed the disparities, conjectured the disappearance of the Lord from the earth. So, this purport is speaking of the cheating propensity of the human being is because of unsatisfaction, because he wanted to be satisfied. To be happy, but material world he will never be happy, therefore he is frustrated. And the solution Prabhupada is giving devotional service. Eng engaging all these senses in the service of Krishna. Verse number 5. Nimitani atyarishtani kale to anugate niranam. Lobhadya adharma prakartim drishtava. Avacha nujam nirpaha, anujam nirpa now. Now is there, he is discussing with Bhimsen. In course of time it came to pass that people in general become accustomed to the greed, anger, pride, etc. Mara Yudhishthira observing all these women spoke to his younger brother. The cause everywhere is time. His own time having arrived, seeing the nature, prakriting of a man, he spoke to the Bhima. Such a pious king as Maharaj Yudhishthira at once become perturbed when there were such inhuman symptoms as greed, anger and irreligiosity, hypocrisy, rampant in society. It appears from this statement that all these symptoms of the degraded society were unknown to the people of that time. And it was astonishing for them to have experienced them with the advent of Kali Yuga or the age of quarrel. So here you can see what is the time change age of Kali Yuga. So we are going to the next verse. Uh, these verses were spoken by Sutta Goswami. And he is telling what was happening to you, what was going on in Maharaj Yudhishthira's mind. Now your Yudhishthira Maharaj is speaking to Bhima. So any question or comment till now?
this still we have to go for this section up till verse 10 All right, so we are continuing verse number six. Yudhishthar vacha sampreshito dwarkayam jishno bandho didrikshaya gyatam chapram punya shlokasya krishna syachavesh vichishtitam. See, almost the same words which are. Sutta Goswami spoke in first verse. Sampreshto Drakayam Jishnu Bandhu Dhrakshe Gyatum Cha Punya Shlokas Krishna Cha. Exactly same shlok. Maharaj Yudhisha said to his younger brother Bhimsen. So because the, the Sutta was telling to the Sanaka, the Rishi, and here Yudhisha is telling the same verse to Arjun. So this is a repetition of the exactly same verse. Here see, here only difference is, Maharaj Yudhishthir said to his younger brother Bhimsen, I sent Arjun to Dwarka to meet his friends and to learn from personality of Godhead of his program of work. And Punya Shloka, again Chakravati saying, famous Krishna. Gataha Sapta Dhuna Masa Bhimase Natva Anujaha. It is almost seven months. Bhimsen, your younger brother Arjun has gone there. Naeti Kasyava Hetur. Why he has not come? What is the reason? Naham Vedadam Anjasa. I, neither I know. Anjasa means, Anjasa generally means, usually I know everything very easily, but I am not able to know why he has not come yet. Anjan is a word came from what we put in the eye, Anjasa, Anjan, which means it is easy, it is very simple, but I don't know why. Since he departed, seven months have passed, yet he has not written. I do not know factually how things are going there. Verse 8. Abhidev Rishina Adishtaha Sakalo ayam upasthitaha Yadatmano angama akridam Bhagavan utsrikshati This verse has a very interesting and lengthy purport which should be noted as an information for us which usually uh, is not common. So verse 8 is very important as far as the purport is concerned. Api Dev Rishin Adishtan. Now this is something related to chapter 13. Yudhishthir Maharaj think Dev Rishi Narada has told that don't cons don't think about uh, Dhritarashtra where he is gone and Vidur where he is gone and Gandhari where he is gone. See Krishna has came for that purpose that time is also over. So he is remembering that uh, Adishtan instructed Devrishi Narad. Sakalo is that time came. Is Krishna is, has departed really? Has that time arrived? Yadatmano Angam Akridam. These two lines are very technical. Yadatmano Atmana, his own self. Angam, plenary portions. Akiradam, manifestation for past time. Bhagavan, the personality of God. Utasrikshati is going to quit. Chakravarti Pad writes, Yudhishthir speak in this manner about Krishna's departure to express lamentation for a friend. Friend means he has a relation with Krishna as a brother, as a friend, as a uh, more little vatsali also because he was elder. And not to express real truth. Real truth is that how can God, Lord disappears? He is eternal. 
However, Saraswati, it means the other meaning of the words. Saraswati speak through his mouth, giving another meaning to these words. And what are the other means? He desired to establish Sisrakshati. He desires to establish his expansion form. Atmanam Angam. Prabhupada has written expansion. Of Narayan. Above Uttar in Vekunta. What type of form has Narayan? It is somewhat expressive awe of pastime Kiranam. It is still not clear. But Srila Prabhupada has written something and you have to see this purport and the next purport will come almost after verse 30 or so and then you put together then you can understand what it means. As we have discussed many times, the Supreme Personality of God and Lord Krishna has many plenary expansions. And each and every one of them, although equally powerful, execute different functions. In Bhagavad Gita, there are different statements by the Lord. And each of these statements is meant for different plenary portions. This is a very interesting purport. Please uh, very carefully read. In Bhagavad Gita, there are different statements by the Lord. And each of these is meant for a different plenary portion. Are portions of the plenary portions. For example, Krishna says, La Krishna, the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious principle or descent of Bharat, yada yada hi dharma se. So whose function is this? Vishnu. Because it is his job to maintain the universal affairs. Next verse, to deliver the faithful, to annihilate the miscreant and also to establish principle of dharma. Paritrana hai sadhuna vina hai. This is not Vishnu normally, it is Krishna. Because the dear devotees, they, Krishna appears only for devotees, not the other purposes. Now the third, if I should cease to work, then all humanity would be misdirected. I would also be the cause of creating unwanted population. And I would thereby destroy the peace of the sent sentient beings. 3.24 So, so this is, and then whatever action is get, this verse, all above statement of Lord apply to different plenary portion of the Lord, namely, his expansion such as Sankarshan, Vasudev, Pradyumna and Anuruddha and Narayan. So when Krishna comes, all the expansions are already included within him. And certain functions are done by Krishna himself and certain are done by Vishnu. Like all the demons killed were by Vishnu, not by Krishna himself. So there are all he himself in different transcendental expansion and still the Lord as Sri Krishna function in a different sphere of transcendental exchange with different grades of devotees. And yet Lord Krishna as he is appear once every 20, 24 hours of Brahma means one day of Brahma, day and night of Brahma. So in one day of Brahma in a kalp or after the lapse of so many solar years or oh, in each and every universe and all is the transcendent pastimes are displayed in each and every universe in a round routine pool. But that routine pool, the function of Krishna, <coughs> Lord Vasudeva, etc. are complex problem for the layman. So before we read beyond this, are you understanding what is explained here? Yes, anybody can say something, yes, hand up, uh, Sachi, uh, Sachi, who's hand up? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhupada, that's what Pranam. Yes. Uh, Prabhupada, you say that uh, the demons were killed by Vishnu and not Krishna. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, even in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we see 
sometime he manifested on different uh, pastime of different incarnations. Even Krishna was asked at Kamya one that how you are Ram and then he said that, that yes this is Ram, I have done all this. So, so when Puran Bhagavan comes he has all the expansion included in him. Okay. And also here you can see what uh, anybody remember exactly in one day of Brahma when Krishna comes, Krishna Swayam Bhagavan when he comes. Uh, he's coming after so many solar years. Their solar years are written here, but exactly if you have to say tem a technical language, then what is the technical language? 28th Chatur Yoga, that in uh, Dwapar, end of Dwapar Yuga. So what you have said is 28th Dwapar Yuga, so, uh, the last part of 20. Which Manvantar? Uh, 50, no, the 7th Manvantar. That is right. Because in one day of Brahma, there are 14 Manvantar. So, 7th Manvantar means midday of Brahma. It's like 12, uh, 12 hours, 12 o'clock. Yes. So, in 7th Manvantar, 28th cycle of 4 Yuga, at the end of Dwapur Yuga, Krishna appears regularly. And then Prabhupada writes, Krishna appears in different also, different, in different spheres, or in a different planets also. Once Prabhupada was in some temple and the Janmashtami was nearby. So devotee said, please, Prabhupada, stay here. Janmashtami. He said, every day there is a Janmashtami. Krishna is appearing in some planet every day. And, Bhakt, uh, and, and, and uh, Vishnu Chakurati Thakur writes, Krishna's childhood pastime is going eternally. When his childhood pastime is over on this planet, his childhood pastime is started in some other planet. So, he is appearing every day in some planet. But the thing is, the thing, like Vasudev has given birth to 400 Krishna, that is Vishnu. But the Yashoda has given birth to the Krishna, 200 Krishna, that is Sham Sundar. So, Chaitanya Charita Myth writes that actually, it was a scheduled time for Krishna to appear, but because Brahmaji has requested for problem of the Mother Earth, so Vishnu has also to appear. Therefore, it was somehow simultaneously both mixed together. Now you see the more interesting thing. So for a layman, it is a complex problem. There is no difference between large self and the large transcendental body. So the body of Lord is Satchitana and there is no difference between soul and body and mind. The expansion execute different activities. When the Lord however appears in his personal, in his person as Lord Sri Krishna, his other primary portion also join in him by his inconceivable potency called Yoga Maya. And thus the Lord, Krishna of Vrindavan is different from Lord of Mahamathura. Or the Lord Krishna of Dwarka, they are different. Different means different in their actions, different in their mood. The Virat loop of Krishna is also different from him, which he has shown to the Arjuna and the Kurukshetra. By his inconceivable potency. The Virat loop exhibited on the battlefield of Kurukshetra is a is a material conception of his form. Therefore, it should be understood that when Claude Krishna was apparently killed, this Prabhupada has written the common word, which, can, which is not actually, nobody can kill. When he was killed by the air, bow and arrow of a hunter, the Lord left his so-called material body in the material world. The Lord is Kevalya. Which means, 
For him, there is no difference between matter and spirit because everything is created from him. Therefore, is creating one sort of body or accepting another body does not mean that he is like the ordinary human living being. Actually, Krishna never left body. He went with the same body. But in some prana it says that body then entered into the sea and that came as a log of wood in uh, Jagannath Puri and Jagannath uh, was carved from that body. Krishna appeared there. This is in some prana as a story like that. But there was no body there. Krishna just went in his self same body back home back to Godhead. Therefore, his quitting one side of body or accepting another side of body does not mean that he is like the ordinary living. All such activities are simultaneously one and different by his inconceivable potency, achinte bheda bheda tattva. When Maharaj Yudhishthira was lamenting the possibility of disappearance, it was just in pursuance of the custom of lamenting, the disappearance of a great friend. But factually, Lord never quit. His transcendent body as is misconceived by the less intelligent person. Such less intelligent person have been condemned by the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita. Avajananti maam mura manusham tanum ashritam param bhavam ajananto maam bhuta maheshwara. This is the verse quoted. He left again his plenary portion. So that uh, Lord left his body meant what is the meaning? That he left again his plenary portion in a respective dham. Transcendent abode. It means when he was going, Narayan went to the Vekunta. Say if uh, there was Narsingha Dev in his body, Narsingha Dev went, uh, went to his own planet. Say Ramachandra went to his own planet, something like that. And then Prabhupada is giving one example. As he left his Virat Rupa in the material world, then he left his other portion which entered into it on the way going back to the Golok Vrindavan. He left other expansion and different planets from which they came and entered into him. So is this, is this uh, uh, purport very clear? Yes. Yes, it's not only Lord which can have many expansion within him. Even Arjun, when he appeared here, he is eternal essence of Krishna. And Lord Indra's portion enter into him. Therefore, when they, we say Pandavas went to the heaven, Indra went to the heaven. Indra portion of the Arjun. But the Arjun went back to the abode of Krishna where he is eternal associate. Nanda Baba, when we hear in Bhagavatam that, oh, Vasu, Druna, and Dhara, they become Nanda and Yashoda. It's not that Nanda and Yashoda are eternal, but Dhru and Dhara enter into them to relish the uh, pastime of Vatsalya Prem. So some, the, the devotees are two together. The Bhisham is also eternal associate of Krishna. In which mellow, by the way, you have done this chapter 9. Bhisham Dev is a eternal associate of Krishna in which mellow? Ira. Huh? Ira. Chivalry. Chivalry is second mellow. This is called secondary rasa. Primary rasa is something else. Secondary is added. Shantras. Not exactly Shantras. It is in one of the purpose. Dasyaras. Added with that uh, is a Veeras. So it means Bhisham is eternal associate in, in a servitude. So uh, the one uh, portion of uh, Vasu, Ast Vasu, enter into Bhishma only. Bhishma is eternally Krishna's associate, but the Vasu only entered for once because of some curse. So we are going to the verse 9. 
यस्मा संपदो राज्यम दारा प्राण कुलम प्रजा आसन संपतन विद्यो लोक अनुग्रह दिस इज द रियलाइजेशन ऑफ महाराज युधिष्टर फ्रॉम हिम ओनली मीन्स फ्रॉम कृष्ण ओनली ऑल अवर किंगली एपिनेंस गुड वाइव लाइव प्रोजेनिक कंट्रोल ओवर अवर सब्जेक्ट विक्ट्री ओवर अवर एनिमीज एंड फ्यूचर अकोमोडेशन एंड हायर प्लानिट हैव बिकम पॉसिबल ऑल दिस इज ड्यू टू हिज काजलेस मर्सी अपॉन अस सो चक्रद्राय विदाउट दी Without the absence of Krishna, the ill, Ill omen would not appear. Uh, yeah. There is expressed in this verse: "Loka means higher world attained by sacrifice." Somebody can read Shri Prabhupada's purport. Uh, prosperity consists of a good wife, good home, sufficient land. Good children, aristocratic family relations, victory over competitors, and by pious works, attainment of accommodation in the higher celestial planet for better facilities of material amenities. These facilities are earned not only by one's hand, manual labor, or by unfair means, but by the mercy of the supreme Lord. Prosperity earned by one's personal endeavor also depends on the mercy of the Lord. Personal labor must be there in addition to the Lord's benedictions. But without the Lord's benedictions, no one is successful. Simply by personal labor, the modernized man of Kali Yuga believes in personal endeavor and denies the benedictions of the Supreme Lord. Even a great sannyasi of India delivered a speech in Chicago, uh, protesting the benedictions of Supreme Lord. But as far as the Vedic sastras are concerned, as we find in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, the ultimate sanctions for all success rest in the hands of Supreme Lord. Maharaj Dhrushra admits this truth in the first in his personal success, and it becomes it behooves one to follow in the footsteps of a great king and devotee of the Lord to make life a full success. If one could achieve success without the sanctions of the lord then no medical practitioner would fail to cure a patient despite the most advanced treatment of a suffering patient by the most up to date medical practitioner uh, there is death and even in the uh, most hopeless case without medical treatment a patient is cured as one is thinking uh, 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 therefore the conclusion is that god sanction is the immediate cause of all the happenings Good or bad, any successful man should be grateful to the Lord for all he has achieved. Hare Krishna. So, in this purport, it's a uh, two things. One is the endeavor by man, and other is blessing of the Lord. Then the work is completed and successful. And pious and devotees always see anything good they. do as a blessing of the lord and if there is something wrong goes they think it is our mistake while the common people when they do good they think we have done this good when they see anything bad they say it is god has done this so this is the difference between the two and shri prabhupad is quoted here a sanyasi in chicago everybody knows him uh but one's whole purpose is one common you know theme the ultimately the sanction of lord in all work is important is there anywhere in bhagavad gita have you read something in where sanction of the lord is important upadrishta anumanta that is parmatma upadrishta anumanta bhakta bhorta bho meshwar i am saying uh, in 18th chapter for any work there are five doers But the ultimate doer is Paramatma, Adhistan, Karta, Karnam, right? And Daivam, that is the verse. Actually, what Paupad says, Paupad is only paraphrasing that verse in whole purport. That is the Daivam only. Paupad there writes in that purport in Bhagavad Gita. It is only the Daivam, the Supreme Lord, who is the ultimate sanction of all the things. We do endeavor. 
So Prabhupada has given example here with good medical treatment person dies and without treatment even the worst person survive. It means something else is important. There's also a verse in Bhagavatam, I think recently we were discussing and teaching. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, father is not responsible for child's protection. Boat is not only the responsible to save the drowning man. And medicine is not only uh, the one which can save the patient. It is the grace of the Lord which is most important. This is the verse also by Prahlad Maharaj similar to this. Anybody remember this type of verse? Right. That is the that is the verse. That is the verse exactly. Who quoted this verse? Pralad or No no Pralad Maya. Who, who, who in the student is quoting this verse? Yeah, yes, who uh, who quoted now? Okay, Chitari Krishnadas. Oh, Chitari Krishnadas, good. So this is the verse uh, exactly. Uh, but but uh, when Prabhupada is writing purport, some verses are in his, uh, you know, subconsciousness going on and he's putting and paraphrasing the word according to the need. So these two verses somehow we can, because the medicine is there, so Prabhupada is thinking of Prahlad Maharaj's verse also, also Balasya. And these verses, uh, as such, we will never appreciate until unless we have personal experience of these things. Uh, it's nothing to say. I think it is almost more than 40 years back. Uh, I have my first son and I have my nephew, my brother's son. Both have the same disease. And I'm, a, I'm, a, and I'm, I'm myself a doctor at that time treating both with the same medicine, with everything same. My son died and my brother's son survived. And at that time I was reading this verse of uh, Seventh Canto. And then I realized, yes, I am the same doctor, I am the same patient. Patient has the same disease and same medicine, but one survived, one other died. Which I have seen personally, and I realized that verse on that day and, and, and then I read the whole seventh canto and all these things at that time really to, to console myself that it's not my responsibility. Ultimately everything depends, is in the hand of Krishna. So, so I'm just remembering when I'm reading, it's a very old story. Almost I would say more than 40 years, 50 years back. Uh, yeah, almost. 40, 45 years back. Verse 10. Pasya utpatan naravyagraha Devyan bhoman sadaikan Darunam sanstoho adhurat Bhayam no buddhi mohanam Now, pasya utpatam Disturbances Narvyagara, it is the address to the Bhimsen. Divyan means in the upper planetary system, Bhomam on the earth. And Sadai, Sadahi Khan, happening of the body and mind. Saddehi Khan, Dehi Khan. So it is exactly when you see these three words, what is coming in your mind? Top three Adi Devak, Adi Bhotik, and Adhyatmik. Exactly these are the three three words. Darunam Sansato Adurad. Darunam a fully dangerous Darun. Sansato indicating Adurat. Is near future all this will happen. Bhayam no buddhi moanam. So just see, O oh man among tiger, Bhimsen. How many miseries due to celestial influence, early reactions and bodily pain, all very dangerous in themselves are foreboding, foreboding, danger in near future by deluding our intelligence. The omen indicate fear, 
భయం సంసిత రీడ్ ప్రభుపాద్ పర్పట్ ఐ థింక్ యూ కెన్ మేట్ ఏ రోస్టర్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ఏబిసి నో సౌండ్ షుడ్ బి క్లియర్ హూ ఇస్ స్పీకింగ్ ఎస్ ప్రభు ప్లీజ్ మటీరియల్ అడ్వాన్స్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ సివిలైజేషన్ మీన్స్ మటీరియల్ అడ్వాన్స్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ పడు ప్రభుజీ మటీరియల్ అడ్వాన్స్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ సివిలైజేషన్ మీన్స్ అడ్వాన్స్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద రియాక్షన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద త్రీ ఫోల్డ్ మిజరీస్ డ్యూ టు సెలెస్టియల్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ అర్త్ రియాక్షన్స్ అండ్ బాడీలీ ఆర్ మెంటల్ పెన్స్ బై ద సెలెస్టియల్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద స్టార్స్ there are many calamities like excessive heat cold rains or no rains and the after effects are famine disease and epidemic the aggregate result is agony of the body and the mind main mad material science cannot do anything main mad material science cannot do anything to counter these three four diseases they are all punishments from the superior energy of maya under the direction of the supreme lord therefore our constant touch with the lord by devotional service can give us relief without our being disturbed in the discharge of our human duties the asuras however who do not believe in the existence of god make their own plans to contract all these three fold miseries and so they meet with failures every time the bhagavad gita 7.14 clearly states that the reaction of material energy is never to become god because of the binding effects of the three modes they can simply be overcome by one who surrenders fully in devotion under the lotus feet of the lord so this purpose is discussing about the three fold miseries tap 3 and this verse of 7.14 you just quote this verse what is the verse 714 devi esha devi esha devi esha gun mai mam maya durtaya ye mam prapadante maya metan tarun ti all right so the whole purport says prabhupad is telling us the <coughs> modern civilizations defect to do the patch work to counter act these three miseries and prabhupada is giving solution uh, for so very simply prabhupada is using these words which uh, are before is kan so everything is in a different language therefore our constant touch with the lord by devotional service can give us relief without being disturbed in the discharge of our human duties so if you have to tell somebody that there is three fold miseries will not disturb you you do devotional service so any verse you can quote this verse one quoted should a prabhupad but any other verse is coming in your mind where three fold miseries does not exist for a devotee anybody remember tapatriya unmulanam This is about Bhagavad's glory in second verse. Dharma Prajita Kaitava Traparmo. Ah, Dharma Prajita Kaitava Nirmasa. This is the verse as Tapatrai Anumulanam. All threefold miseries are uprooted from the bottom, right? Is it okay? Yes. Now these are the symptoms in the body, but the verse 11 is symptom on the body. Now we are going to the next section, verse 11 to 20, further bad omens experienced by Maharaj Yudhishthar. Urvakshihi bahavo mahiyam spurvanti anga punha punha vepatus chapi hirde arad dashyanti vipriyam. Left side of my body, my thigh, my arm and eyes are all quering again and again. I am having heart palpitation due to fear. All this indicate undesirable happenings vipriyam undesirable arad 
आराध वर्ड इज द मीनिंग ऑफ वर्ड आराध ड्यू टू फियर ओ भीमा माई लेफ्ट साई हियर दी बॉडी लिओमेंट्स आर डिस्क्राइब एक्चुअली दी ट्रेम्पलिंग ऑफ द लेफ्ट साइड इज इन नॉट स्पीशियस सो प्लीज रीड शिला प्रभुपाद पर पट material existence is full of undesirables things we do not want are forced upon us by some superior energy and we do not see that these undesirables are under the grip of three modes of material nature when a man's eyes arms and thighs all quiver constantly one must know that something is going on something is going to happen which is undesirable these undesirables are compared to fire in forest Analogy. So, this is an analogy. This uh, these undesirables are compared to the fire in the forest. Is an analogy. Okay, read it further. No one goes into the forest to set fires, but fires automatically take place in the forest, creating inconceivable calamities for the living beings of the forest. Such a fire cannot be extinguished by any human effort. the fire can be extinguished only by the mercy of the lord who sends clouds to pour water on the forest similarly undesirable happenings in life cannot be checked by any number of plans such miseries can be removed only by the mercy of the lord who sends his bona fide uh, representatives to enlighten human beings and thus save them all from calamities now there are two analogies in that somebody can figure out what are the analogies The fire? calamities like uh, forest fire, is yeah. it like because they come and like they are there because of the material nature? So, okay, the uh, one is that uh, fire and fire is compared to material calamities, and then another uh, uh, analogy is given here is. Um, the Lord sends uh, representatives who are like clouds who pour water on the forest fire. Yeah, so a spiritual master is compared to the cloud. is this uh, purport have you read somewhere ki spiritual master is compared to the cloud in bhagavad gita there is a uh, some purport like that generally the water of the ocean cannot uh, satisfy anybody for drinking or cultivation so the all vedic knowledge is like a ocean but the sadhu or a spiritual bona fide spiritual master is like a cloud who who collect the water from the ocean and then he shower that uh, sweet water to satisfy the needs of the human beings so clouds are compared to the supreme lord sir uh, representative of spiritual master he can guide us to be free from then then sansara davanal this morning we are discussing there is coming in prabhupada's mind when prabhupada is writing this purport sansara dava nala lida loka tranaya karuna ghana ghana tvam prapatasya kalya gunarana vasya bande guru shi can you see this can you see this what is coming in prabhupada's mind this is the way to see prabhupada's purports can you see the prabhupada's purport like this ha huh? when you see like this you you relish it you, you like this this is what actually is written how prabhupada has written this when you can see this then you feel oh, oh i understand yes, yes this is right is it okay so yes, so two analogies are there and prabhupada when writing this he is remembering sansar davanal शिवयोद्यतमादिम अभीरोना आनना आनना मीन्स मऊथ मंग शाम अभीरे अभीवा टू मोर ओमेन्स जस्सी भीम ओ भीम हाउ शी जे कल क्राइज एट राइजिंग सन एंड वोम इट फायर and how the dark box at me fearlessly omen and earth are described these are the omen and earth a jekal shiva 
facing the rising sun is howling while vomiting fire from his mouth. O Bhima Anga, a fearless dog looking at me in howling. These are some bad omens indicating something undesirable in the future. These are omen on earth. Now the next. Shasta hakuravan timam soyam dakshinam pashva apare vaham shapurusha vyagraha lakshahi rudato mama. O Bhimsen, tiger among men. Now useful animals like cow are passing me on my left side. And lower animals like asses are circumambulating me. My horses appear to weep upon seeing me. Auspicious animals are once like cow. They are going on left. Savyam. In auspicious animals are like donkey. are going clockwise. Doing my parikarma. I see that horses won are crying. Mrityo dutah kapoto ayam olokaha kampayan manaha pratiulukas chaha kuha kuhava nai vishmam vaishunyam ichata. Just see, the Spizian is like messenger of death. Shrieks of the owls and the rival crows make my heart tremble. It appears that they want to make a void of whole universe. So these are in the sky. Pigeons, everything, they are in the sky. Pigeon, Prati Ulkaha is a type of owl which is an enemy to other owls or crows. Dhomra Dishaha Pari Dayaha Kampate Bhu Sadribi Neraghatas Chamahim Mahantat Sakamcha Stanyo Anubihi. Just see how the smoke encircles the sky. It appears that earth and mountain are throbbing. Just hear the cloudless thunder and see the bowls from the below. Air is hazy in all directions like a wall. The earth along with the mountain is trembling. There is sudden loud clamor and cloudless thunder. The great direction are like wall. There is tremendous sudden clamor. Nirghataha. Along with cowless thunder. Stanyahata. Stanyatnubhi. 16. Vayuvati kharas prasho. Rajasaha visarajam tamaha. Asarajaha varashanti jalada. Vibhatrasam eva sarvataha. Sarvataha. The wind blows violently, blasting dust everywhere and creating darkness. Clouds are raining everywhere with bloody disaster. The wind creates intense darkness. The clouds seem to rain blood. Asrik. Soryam hata prabham pasya graham maradam mithodvi sansukolai Bhuta ganahi jwalite evaro dasi. The rays of suns are declining. The star appears to be fighting amongst themselves. These are the these are the omens in the sky. Confused living entities appears to be ablaze and weeping. A uh, note. Can you see the note? The astrologically, this means that sun is very close to the other planets in the sky. This is not auspicious. And see the earth and heaven bl a blast with the followers of the Shiva along with other beings. So see blazing earth and heaven, row the sea. With Shiva, row the sea, with Shiva. Attend and mix with other living entities. Sasang Kulit. 18. Nadyo Nadda Aschaha Akshuti Akshubhittaha Saransihi Cha Manansicha Na jwalati agnihi ajaye na kalo ayam kim vidhasyati. On the earth again, omen on the earth, river tributaries, ponds, reservoirs, and mind are all perturbed. Butters no longer ignite the fire. Ejium means ghee. What is this extraordinary time? What is going to happen? Male and female river, nadya nadya. The lakes and mind of all beings are agitated. 
Fire does not burn the ghee with ghee. What does the future hold? Again, they speak of women on the earth. So maybe you can make a list of oh, men on the earth, oh, men in the body, oh, men in the sky. Napi banti stanam vatsa na dohiyanti chamatraha rudanti ashruho mukha gavo na hrishanti richabhabraje Napi banti stanam vatsa The cows are not actually sucking the cheats of the cow. Na dohiyanti chamatraha It means gav cows are not giving milk. Rudanti ashru mukha gavo. The cows are crying and tears, they are shedding tears. Naharshanti rishabha varje. Varje means in the pasturing grounds, rishabha means uh, bulls. The cows do not drink milk and the cows do not give milk. The cows well with tearful of face and the bull do not enjoy in the field. Devitani rudranti va svedanti he uchalanti cha imajan hapada gramaha pura udyana udyana akrasha akra ashramaha brashtaha shriyo niranandaha kima agham darashanti na Deities seem to be crying in the temple. Daivitani means duties. Rudanti means crying. Lamenting and perspiring. They seem to leave all the cities, villages, town, garden, mines and hermitages are now devoid of beauty and bereft of all happiness. I do not know what sort of calamities are now awaiting us. So here are the words. Huh? Daivitani means duties. Rudanti means eva. Uh, which means crying, Sividranti means perspiring, and Ushkalani means wants to get uh, leave the temple. Ime Janapada, and here Janapada means cities, Grama means villages, Pura means uh, big cities, Udyan, garden, Akan, mines, ashram, hermitage. So these are Bristol Shriya, they have no opulence. So here is the uh, last verse over. Now is the next verse, 21 to 24, Arjun's appearance. Manyaitai maha utpatai nonam bhagvata padahi Anyana purusha shri bihi hina bhuhatta sobhaga I think that all these early disturbances indicate some greater loss to good fortune of the world. The world was fortunate to have been marked with the footprints of Lord's feet of Lord. These signs indicate that this will no longer be. I consider, Yudhishthira Maharaj is saying, Manye, that the earth is devoid of feet of Lord, whose marks like the thunderbolt and elephant of God do not exist in other persons. Anya Purusha Sri Bhi. So now, Arjun is uh, arriving. In verse 22, Arjun is arriving. Any question till now? We have finished. Yeah, we have finished almost half. Hare Krishna. Yes. So we was, uh, when we were reading this. Yes. These different comments, so two things came to my mind. One is uh, where all these omens are mentioned, like these are all bad omens. Is it some place? Or uh, I, I think there are, sh there are Shastra which tells about the omens and their meanings. There are, there are special scriptures about these omens which are good, which are bad. Uh, there are something like even in Rama, and it's, uh, it says there are bad omens, and then then Dasrath asked uh, Maharaj, Vashish, there are bad omens are there. He said something bad is coming, but now there is a good omen. The bad thing will go away also. So I think there are much description of these omens and some sort of other uh, some something which have some meaning, and they are in a certain books. I don't know. I have not seen such book. Okay. Other thing was uh, like here yeah, description of 
cows, asses, horses. So I was feeling that in the nowadays in the big cities, the cows, horses, and asses they are not seen anywhere. So because because they, they 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 are already said the dogs are howling, so only dogs are there. It means the worst time is there. <laughs> yeah, people are living with dogs now. These are the omens, but I, I think uh, uh, His Holiness uh, Radha Govind Swami Maharaj used to say for Bhagavatam to understand you have to go and village and see what is village life. Because everything is like a village. In cities you cannot see this. Thank you. Anybody any else has some question or comment? Are you are you comfortable? I don't know, you have already done thirteen chapters. I am just reading all verses and going through the whole purport with the commentary by Vishwanath Chakravati. I, it may be a little slow, but is it okay? Oh. Uh, Prabhupada, you said uh, that Lord Krishna, the body, uh, he, and, and he just went with body but, and, and some other Quran says like uh, his body is uh, converted or the, it is a uh, wood and that is Lord Jagannath. But in 11th Canto, Prabhupada, it was written uh, the funeral uh, of uh, that body of Lord Krishna was done by Arjuna. No. I don't, I don't think there no, I don't think there's funeral ceremony here for Lord Krishna's body, no. And in Purpur Prabhuji, uh, it was written like it was it is just a Leela of Lord Krishna. Uh even eleventh canto it is it, it may be in the last uh, last chapter, but the last two chapters is uh, Krishna is winding his pastime. I think uh what, sometime Prabhupada has to comment on this sir. Uh, he says, just to bewilder the demonic people. Yes, Prabhupada. There's a, there's, there's just to bewilder the demonic people, sometime it is said that his body was, uh, say, final rites were done by Arjun. I, I, I have, I, I think I, I'm not remembering this, maybe, purport. But generally speaking, there is a photo, in the old, olden days there was a drama plot by the the word is that Krishna going into his own abode. Oh, and Prabhupada was watching that drama, but though drama was very, very nicely played by the uh, devotees, but Prabhupada said, ah, devotee never want to see Krishna going. Uh, there they, they, saw, they, they showed that Krishna in his own body going through the different demigods, uh, planets back to Golok Vrindavan. I think the point which actually is for our discussion is not the whether Krishna left his body behind or not. The point for our discussion is in Krishna's body, transcendental body, there were also other expansion of Vishnu. They were left uh, to go to their own planets. That was the essence of the purport. The meaning of living body there is a uh, in this purport, those uh, different Vishnu incarnation, they were within the body of Krishna, they left to their own abode. That is actually the meaning of this word. But 11th canto, exactly that verse, if uh, we like, we can discuss tomorrow. But I think their Prabhupada's purport is always just to bewilder the demons. This pastime <laughs> is, is a sort of illusion created. Okay. It says, uh, even the hunter who has uh, shot the arrow at the soul of the Lord Spirit of Krishna, the hunter was sent back to the spiritual world first and then Krishna left. Who was that hunter, by the way? Anybody remember? Uh, Bali in previous uh, uh, life and there, in the previous life, since Lord Rama uh, killed Bali by hiding behind the tree, so the whole uh, thing was reciprocated where this time this hunter uh, has shot the arrow behind the tree to the gods. 
but if, but if we say bali it means God, it means ram has a karma and so he got the reaction of the karma that will not withstand the philosophy of devotion how can karma how can karma affect the supreme lord it will all uh, this is a this is a saying this is a this is called lok vichar it's not shastra vichar shastra vichar which i read is bhrugu muni who kicked at the chest of lord vishnu has become the hunter and then bhrugu muni was the hunter this is the something which i read in a uh, summary bhagavatam but bali if, as if we heard this in a public saying but that actually is something which is against the devotional principle that karma affect the supreme lord lord is beyond karma how can the karma be to the lord this is a reaction of the karma that cannot affect krishna or ram no philosophically it is not a, a sound statement But Prabhu, one one uh, logic is that uh, since La, uh, Bali was killed, so definitely uh, he he has been liberated. So uh, how can he come back? I uh, want when, when Ram has uh, delivered him, then how can he take birth again? He is already yeah, delivered. Yeah, but many of the cases like it is all enacting lila, like uh, uh, from. Uh, There's Duryodhana mother. She uh, she uh, cursed uh, Lord uh, Krishna about the uh, destructions of uh, Yadu dynasty, and same is being enacted. So there also law of karma does not abide. But always. Well, there is. There, oh yeah, there for Lila. That's okay. But but the reason given there is curse will not do anything to Yadus. Curse will not affect the Dwarka Dham. That's what they have to go to the. other place for the curse to be accomplished in dham even to the north the curse was not working he was staying there for months so in dham there is no influence of anybody's curse and no curse can touch supreme lord but uh, just for the part uh, of leela there are certain things are happening like that but exactly philosophically uh, the no karm can touch supreme lord okay we have to go far Going to the next. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Or last letter they ask now. Sorry. I had one question. Oh, so I had one doubt. So can I ask now? Yes. Well, what is your what is your question? Yeah, because uh, yeah, there's when the there's annihilation of all Yadu has taken place, and that time Lord Krishna had sent sent a messenger to. Uh, Arjuna, that within seven days this Dwarka Dam will go under the sea, so take all the uh, things back. Now here, what we uh, see in this uh, uh, previous sloka, that uh, after listening to um, uh, Vidur, and that time already uh, this uh, uh, this Krishna Lila annihilations of Adu has taken place. Then Narada, and then uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj send, sending the. Uh, Ar- Arjuna to Dwarka. So that seven days, how we we able to uh, understand that? Uh, because after that, lot of time has passed. So no time has that? passed. Arjuna was gone seven month back, and during in during that time, uh, Vidur came. <coughs> then Dhritarashtra left, and then Narad came, and Arjuna was already there. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. So that was the question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it's our sequence. You you put in a chronological order, then the dates will be okay. Uh, the other thing okay. is that there are something we are taking from Mahabharat, and there are something we are taking from Bhagavatam, and they both have a difference because there is a kalp bed, because some something is compiled in a different kalp. So there are different places and some different timing also in chronology. So if we take only Bhagavatam, then we can have a some version. If we take the Mahabharat also, then there is a uh, there is a, a different version also. Okay, twenty twenty two twenty second. It is chintastasya drishta arishte na chetasa. 
अर्जुन केम बैक फ्रॉम दिटी ऑफ यदु द्वारका तम पाद निपति तुम ही वॉज बोइंग डाउन टू दोड स्पीट ऑफ युधिस्टर अयथा पूर्व आतुरम इज नॉट लाइक बिफोर ही वॉज डूइंग ही वॉज वेरी आतुरम डिजेक्टेड अधो वदनम हिज हेड वॉज डाउन अबिंदुम एंड टीयर्स सृजंतम नयना अबजम हिज लोटस आइज वॉज फुल ऑफ टीयर्स when he bowed at the his feet means yudhishthir's feet when arjun bowed at yudhishthir's feet the yudhishthir saw that his dejection was unprecedented his head was down and tears gliding from his lotus eyes vilokya udvigan hridayo vicham anujam nirpaha उट वेल फॉर अब दी महाराज So Maharaj Yudhishthir said my dear brother please tell me whether our friends and relatives such as Madhu Bhoj Dasharha Araha Satvatah Andhak and the members of the Yadu family are all passing their days in happiness these are the different clans of the Yadu ones they are residing in Dwarka 56 koti Yadu ones was living in Dwarka शूरो महा शूरो माता महा क्वच स्वस्थ आसते वाथ मारिश मातुल सानुज कजे कुशल आनक दुम दुबी आनक दुबि दुबी इज नेम ऑफ वसुदेव इज माय रेस्पेक्टफुल ग्रांड फादर सोरसेन इन ए हैप्पी मूड and all my maternal uncle vasudev and his younger brothers are all doing well sura note he was vasudev and kunti's father sursen was father of kunti and vasudev they were therefore brother and sisters he had nine other brothers vasudev was nine other brothers and three other daughters kunti was later adopted by kunti bhoj well all our maternal uncle vasudev and his younger brothers well मारिशह मीन्स रेस्पेक्टेड सप्त स्वसारो पत्न्यो मातुलायन सासते संसुषाक्षेम देवकी प्रमुखा स्वयं हिस् सेवन वाइफ हेडेड बाय देवकी आर ऑल सिस्टर्स दे आर दे एंड देयर सन्स एंड आर एन लॉ आर हैपी Are our seven aunts Vasudev's wives who were like sisters headed by Devaki? His wives were Rohini Devaki, Upadevi, Vrkka Devi, Saptami Devi, Shardha Devi, and Shurta Andhara. Jana. However, Shurta Devi was a Vaish woman he met in the forest. However, in the commentary of Sri Mad Bhagavatam one eleven twenty nine, it is mentioned that Vasudev actually had eighteen wives. This is also mentioned in Sri Mad Bhagavat ten eighty four forty seven, and their sons and their wives as well. Swasaraha means mutual indicating sisters. Kachidara ja huko ji vati asatputro asetanu jaha hridaka swat susto 
सस्तो अक्रूरो सस्तो अक्रूरो जयंत गद सारण आसते कुशलम कजद ये श्रुत जीत आदय किज दासते सुखम रामो भगवान सात्वताम प्रभो Our Ugarsen, whose son was mischievous Kansa, and his younger brother is still alive, is still living. Our Hridik and his son Kirt Varma happy. Our Akrura, Jayant and Gad Saran, and uh, Shatru Jit all happy. How is Balram, the personality of God and protector of the devotees? Chakrati Pad writes, Akrur. Say Ahuk is name of Ugarsin. His evil son was Kansa. His evil son was Kansa. Ugarsin's younger brother is Devak. Hardik's son is Kirt Varma. Jayant Gad Sharan, not Sharan and Gad were son of Vasudev and Roheni. And Shatru Jit mentioned in the next verse. were brothers vasudev's other sons shila prabhupad is giving a little twist to the purport that how come he is asking about the ugarsin which is in mathura so hastinapur the capital of pandu was situated somewhat near present new delhi and kingdom of ugarsin was situated in mathura while returning to the delhi from dwarka arjun must have visited the city of mathura and therefore the inquiry about the king of mathura is valid amongst the various names of the relative name of ram or balram eldest brother of lord krishna is added with the word the personality of godhead because lord balram is the immediate expansion of vishnu tatva as prakash vigra of krishna so what is the other name of the expansion of krishna as compared to the prakash vidra vigra balram Balram is a Prakash Vigra. Vishnu Tattva and Krishna expand in two ways: Prakash and Vibha or what? Vilas. Vilas. Prakash in which Krishna expand into equally powerful, but not same form, not same mood, like Balram is a Prakash. when krishna expand himself as krishna with the same mood and same form is called vilas vigra as in ras ras leela or as the husband of the 16108 queens that's called vilas vigra prakash and vilas are the two expansions of krishna so can you repeat the meanings prakash is balram where the expansion has a different color different form and different mood when the expansion of the same color same mood and same form then is called vilas vigra the example is a ras leela the supreme lord also one without a second expand himself as many other living beings the vishnu tatva living being are expansion of supreme lord and all of them are qualitatively and quantitatively equal with lord but the exempt expansion of jeev shakti the category of the ordinary living entity are not at all equal with the lord one who consider jeev shakti and vishnu shakti to be on the same level are considered condemned soul of the world pakhandi shri ram al balram is protector of the devotees of the lord baldev act as a spiritual master of all devotees and by his causeless mercy the fallen souls are delivered shri baldev appeared as nityanand prabhu during the event event of lord chaitanya and The great Lord Nityananda Prabhu exhibited His causeless mercy by delivering the pair of extremely fallen souls, namely Jagai and Madai. Therefore, it is particularly mentioned here that Balaram is the protector of devotees of the Lord. How? By His divine grace, only one can approach the supreme Lord Sri Krishna, and thus Balaram is the mercy incarnation of Lord, manifest as a spiritual master, the servant, the savior of the pure devotees. प्रद्योम सर्वृषीना सुखमासते महारथ गंभीर अनुरिधो वर्धते भगवान उत ना दिस इज दर्पट ऑफ दि वर्ष एट एंड पर्पट ऑफ दि वर्ष थर्टी 
you have to mix together to understand something more. How is Pardyumana, the great general of the Virshni family? Is he happy? And is Anirudha, the plenary expansion of personality of God, faring well? Gambhir Raya means piracy in battle. Pardyumana and Anirudha are also expansion of personality of God and thus they are also Vishnu Tattva. At Dwarka, Lord Vasudeva is engaged in his astral pastime along with his plenary expansion, namely Sankrishan, which is Balaram, Pardyumana and Anirudha. And therefore, each and every one of them can be addressed as personality of Godhead, as it is mentioned in the connection with the name Anirudha. So this uh, purport says expansions are also separate as well as within Krishna himself. And all the chieftain son of Lord Krishna, such as Susan, Charudeshan, Sham, the son of Jambati and Rishab, along with their sons, all doing well. Shri Prabhupada's purport. As already mentioned, Lord Krishna married 16,108 wives, and each of them had 10 sons and one daughter, which is not here. Therefore, 16,100 uh, 16, into 10 is equal to 1,61,080 sons. They all grew up and each of them had a many, many sons as their above father. And the whole aggregate was something near 16,10,800 family members of the Lord. The Lord is the father of all living beings who are countless in number. Therefore, only a few of them are called to associate with the Lord in his transcendental pastime as the Lord of the Dwarka on this earth. It is not astonishing that the Lord maintained a visible family consisting of large position uh, of many members, so many members. It is better to refrain from comparing the Lord's position to ours. And it becomes a simple truth as soon as we understand at least a partial calculation of Lord's transcendental position. King Yudhishthira, while inquiring about Lord's sons and grandsons at Dwarka, mentioned only the chieftains among them, for it was impossible for him to remember all the names of Lord's family members. Tathaiva anocharaha saurahi shurta devo adhava adhyaha udhva adhyaha Sunanda Nanda Sarishanya Yichanya Satva Satva Tarishba Api Swastya Sate Sarve Rama Krishna Bujashriya Api Sambaranti Kushlama Smakam Banda Soherda Badda Soherda Also Surta Dev Udhav and other Nanda Sunanda and other leaders of the liberated souls who are constant companions of Lord are protected by Lord Balaram and Krishna are they are all doing well in their respective functions. Do they who are all eternally bound to friendship with us remember our welfare? Prabhupada's purport. The constant company of Lord Krishna such as Udhav and all liberated souls. They are all liberated souls. And all they descend along with Lord Krishna to his, this material world to fulfill the mission of the Lord. Pandavas are also liberated souls who descended along with Lord Krishna to serve him in his transcendent past time on this earth. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.8, the Lord and his eternal associate who are also liberated soul like the Lord come down on this earth at certain intervals. And Lord remembers them all, but uh, his associate, although liberated soul, together uh, they forget uh, to their being because they are Tattish Shakti or marginal potential. There is the difference between the Vishnu Tattva and Jiva Tattva. The Dhi Tattva are infinitesimal, potential particles of the Lord, and therefore they require the protection of the Lord at all times. And to the eternal servitor of the Lord, the Lord is pleased to give all protection at all times. The liberated soul never therefore think themselves as free, as free as Lord, or as powerful as Lord, but they always seek the protection of the Lord in all circumstances, both in the material world and the spiritual world. This dependence of the liberated soul is constitutional for the liberated soul are like a spark of the fire. Analogy. The liberated soul are like a spark of the fire that are able to exhibit the glow of the fire along with the fire and not independently. 
independently the glow of the spark is extinguished although the quality as the fire are glowing is there thus those who give up the protection of the lord and become so called lord themselves out of spiritual ignorance come back again to this material world even after prolonged tapasya of severest type that is the verdict of all vedic literature what is this anybody can guess what is this thus those who give up the protection of the lord and become so called lord themselves out of spiritual ignorance come back again to this material world even after prolonged tapasya of severest type what what is this anybody can guess out this is like kavi mayavadi like patanti other that that is the worst that is the exactly worst huh? मुक्त मानी ना खृचेण पदम पत्रे न पतंती अदा जुष्ण अनादरात जुष्ण दैट इज दर्स एक्चुअली अबाउट दी मायावादीज दे वॉन्ट सेट वी वॉन्ट टू बी लार्ड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ देयर इग्नोरेंस दे कम बैक इवन आफ्टर खृचेण दैट इज दर्स दैट इज दर्स राइट भगवान अपी गोविंदो ब्रह्मो भक्त वत्सल ना हो थर्टी एट वर्स मीन्स Yudhishthir Maharaj now so glorify Krishna and his influences so this was a uh, 34 to 38 so we are going to the next section bhagwan api govindo brahmyo bhakta vatsala ke chit pure sudhar mayam sukhasate swird vrata so is lord krishna supreme personal god who gives pleasure to the cows and the senses and the brahmanas who is very affectionate towards his devotees enjoy the pious assembly at the dwarka puri surrounded by friends it is not proper at all to ask if krishna the supreme lord is happy therefore he ask is he happy in assembly hall of in dwarka now this purport is a little lengthy but it's good purport here is this particular verse in this particular verse lord described as bhagwan govind brahmanya and bhakt vatsal four word is bhagwan swam and then prabhupad gives the six bhag of a bhagwan he just name those full of opulence full of power full of knowledge full of beauty full of fame full of no one is equal or greater than him he quotes bhagavad gita he is govinda he is play gives play to gao and senses who have purified now this is prabhupad is writing something those who have purified their senses by devotional service of the lord can render unto him real service and thereby drive transcendental pleasure out of such purified senses rishikena rishikena sevanam that is the meaning only the impure condition soul being living being cannot drive any pleasure from the senses but being illusioned by the false pleasure of senses he becomes servant of the senses therefore we need his protection for our own interest Lord is the protector of cows and the Brahminical culture. Now you see, this is something, some purport very similar to the one in a, in the eighth chapter of first canto. A society devoid of cow protection and Brahminical culture is not under the direct protection of Lord. Just as prisoner analogy, just as prisoner in the jail are not under the protection of the king, but under the protection of severe agent of the king. without cow protection and cultivation of brahmanical qualities in human society at least for section of the member of the society no human civilization can prosper at any length the brahmanical culture by brahmanical culture the, the development of the dharmant qualities of the goodness namely truthfulness equanimity sense control forbearance simplicity general knowledge transcendental knowledge and firm faith in the vedic wisdom one can can become brahman and thus see the lord as he is and after surpassing brahmanical perfection very important line one has to become a devotee of the lord so that his loving affection in the form of propi as the form of proprietor master friend proprietor neutral master servant friend what sakha son vatsal and lover conjugal can be an Transcendently achieved, the stage of devotee 
विच अट्रैक्ट दिन अफेक्शन ऑफ लॉर्ड डज नॉट डिवेलप अनलेस वन हैज डिवेलप द क्वालिटीज ऑफ ब्राह्मण एज अबो मैंशन द लॉर्ड इज इंक्लाइंड टू द ब्राह्मण ऑफ क्वालिटी नॉट ऑफ फॉल्स प्रस्टीज दो आर लेस देन ब्राह्मण बाय क्वालिफिकेशन के नॉट रिस्टेब्लिश एनी रिलेशन विद लॉर्ड जस्ट एज फायर के नॉट बी केंडल फ्रॉम द रा अर्थ एंड एनालॉजी फायर के नॉट बी किंडल किंडल फ्रॉम द रा अर्थ अनलेस देर इज वुड अल्दो देर इज ए रिलेशन बिटवीन द वुड एंड अर्थ सिंस द लॉर्ड इज ऑल परफेक्ट इन हिमसेल्फ देर कुड नॉट बी एनी क्वेश्चन ऑफ हिज वेलफेयर नाउ द टॉपिक डिफरेंट मारा युदिस्टर रिफ्रेंड फ्रॉम आस्किंग दिस क्वेश्चन He simply inquired about his residential place, Dwarka Puri, where pious men assemble. Lord is there only where pious men assemble, and takes pleasure in their glorification, and uh, they are glorifying the supreme truth. Maharaj Yudhishthira was anxious to know about the pious men and their pious act in the city of Dwarka. So this purport has some devotional uh, information. and the brahmanical culture and uh, mainly cow protection and brahmanical culture are most important uh the five things if they are taken care then civilization will be successful and this among the five things these are the two ga uh, cow and brahman the three others are children women and what is the fifth one Old men, old people. old people, right? Mangla ya cha loka nam kshema ya cha bhava ya cha asate yadu kul ambodo kul ambodo ambodo means ocean. Adya ananta sakhapuman yada bahudanda gupta yam swapuryam yada vo archita ha kiranti hi parmanandam mahapurushai ka eva. Mahapurushika is purport is mostly on Mahapurushika, which means people like people in the Vaikuntha. The original person of God is the Enjoyer and the Enjoyer and the Balram, the Primal Lord, Anant, Anant Sakha, are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection, and general progress of the entire universe. And the member of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of the Lord, are enjoying like life like the resident of spiritual sky in the first person krishna with the help of balram residing happily in the ocean of yadu family for giving prema liberation and prosperity to people mangalaya means giving prem <coughs> kshemaya means uh, <coughs> for giving liberation and bhavaya means for giving material prosperity Ananta Sakha means with the help of Balram. Pro, oh, please read Shri Prabhupada's purport. As we sound is not clear, sound sound is not clear. No good sound. No good sound. Please, somebody else who has a good microphone is a little lengthy. Purport. As <laughs> many times the personality of God Vishnu resides within each and every universe in two capacities, namely as Garbo Daksha Vishnu and the Siro Daksha Vishnu. The Siro Daksha Vishnu has his own planet on the northern top of the universe, and there is a great ocean of milk where the Lord resides on the bed of the. Ananta incarnation of Baldeva thus Maharaj Yudhishthira has compared the Yadu dynasty to the ocean of milk and Sri Balram to the Ananta where where Lord Krishna resides he has compared the citizen of Dwarka in the liberated inhabitants of the Vaikuntha loka beyond the material sky further then we can see with our eyes and beyond the seventh fold covering of the universe there is a causal ocean in which all the universes are floating like footballs and beyond the causal ocean there are there is an unlimited span of spiritual sky generally known as the effulgence of brahman within this effulgence there are innumerable spiritual planets and they are known as the vaikuntha planets 
each and every vacuum planet is many many times bigger than the bigger universe within the material world and in each of them there are innumerable inhabitants who look exactly like lord vishnu these inhabitants are known as the maha parishikas or the persons directly engaged in the service of the lord they, they are happy in those planets and are without any kind of misery and they live per, per, perpetually in full its fullness enjoying life in full bliss and knowledge without fear of birth and death old age or disease and without the influence of kala eternal time maharaj yudhishthira has compared the inhabitants of dwarka to the maha parishikas or the vakunta loka because they are so happy with the lord in the bhagavad gita there are many references to the vakunta lokas and they are mentioned there as madhama or the kingdom of the lord hari krishna so what we have read in this purport is a analogy milk ocean ananta and krishna and the inhabitant so dwarka vasis are all vaikunta vasis and prabhupad used to say my devotees are also coming from vaikunta sometime he used to say associate of prabhupad were also a vaikunta men the yad was worship even by the dev- devatas play like an inhabitant of vaikunta in their city which is protected by krishna there are worship even by devatas mahapurusheka eva means like the followers of lord of vaikunta or it can mean like conqueror that with great power verse 37 i think one section we will not be able to do today we can do till verse 32 or say 38 and then yudhishthira ask about arjun for his dispend uh, say for his uh, uh, moroseness that we will do tomorrow i thought we will finish this chapter and go to the next chapter but i am sorry yad pad asushro shana mukhya karmana satya dyo dwi asht sahasra yoshita nirajetya sankhya tridashan sadat tadashi shoharanti vrajja yudha valabhya valabhochita vrajja ayudha Vajra Ayudha means Indra. Valbicha means like the wife of Indra, Sachi Devi. Simply by administering comfort at the lowest feet of Lord, which is most important for all of all services, the queens of Dwarka, headed by Satya Bama, induce the Lord to conquer the demigod. Thus, the queen enjoys things which are prerogative of the wives of the control of Thunderbolt, which means Sachi. defend uh, defeating the devatas three dasam means defeating uh, through the strength of krishna tad ashisha means parijat and other things and uh, vajra ayudha valabhi is sachi now shri prabhupada has given the whole history of satya bhama so this whole purport is about satya bhama Satya Bhama, one of the principal queens of Lord Krishna at Dwarka, after killing Narakasur, Lord Krishna visited the place of Narakasur accompanied by Satya Bhama. He went to Indraloka along with Satya Bhama, and she was received by Sachi Devi, who introduced her to the mother of the demigods, Aditi. Aditi was very much pleased with Satya Bhama, and she blessed her with the benediction of permanent youth as long as Lord Krishna remained on the earth. Aditi also took her with her to show her the special progress. progressive of the demigods in the heavenly planet when sadema saw the parijat flower she desired to have it in her palace at dwarka after that she came back to dwarka along with her husband and expressed her willingness to have the parijat flower at her place satyabhama's place was especially bedecked with the valuable jewels and even in the hottest season of the summer the inside of the palace remained cool as if air conditioned she decorated her palace with famous various flags heralding the news of her great husband's presence there once along with her husband she went met dropati and she was anxious to be instructed by dropati in the way and means of pleasing the husband dropati was expert in uh, this affair because she kept five husband the pandavas and all were very much pleased with her 
on receipt of drupadi's instruction she was very much pleased and offered her good wishes and returned to dwarka she was the daughter of satrajit after the departure of krishna when arjuna visited dwarka all the queens including sadya mama and rukmani lamented for lord with great defleeting feeling at the last stage of her life she felt left for the forest to undergo severe penance Sathya Bhama instigated her husband to get Parijat flower from heavenly planet and the Lord guard it even by force from demigods. As a common husband secured things to please his wife. As already explained, the Lord had very little to do with so many wives to carry out their orders like an ordinary man. But because the queens accepted the highest quality of devotional service, namely administering the Lord's Lord all comfort, the Lord played the part of faithful and complete husband. No earthly creature can expect to have things from the heavenly kingdom, especially Parijat flower, which are simply to be used by the demigods. But due to their becoming large faithful wives, all of them enjoy the special prerogative of great wives as denizens of the heaven. In other words, since the Lord is proprietor of everything within this creation, the Lord is the proprietor of everything within this creation, it is not very astonishing for the queens of Dwarka to have any rare things for any part of their this universe okay 38 yadaba udand abhya udya ano jeevano yado paravi yado pravira hai akuto bhayamo adhe adhe karamante ha angrivi ahirtam balat sabham sudharmam sura sato Satam Uchitam. The great heroes of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of Lord Krishna, always remain fearless in every respect, and therefore their feet trample over the Sudarma assembly house, which the best demigod deserved, but which was taken away from them. Bahu Danda Bhyam Udyama. Anujivena means they who subsist on the strength of his arms. So here is this little purport about the power of Yadus because of Krishna. So please read this purport, then we end for today. Those who are direct, yes, yes, please, please. Yes. Those who are directly servitors of the Lord are protected by the Lord from all fearfulness. Ah, uh, sound, sound is actually not clear. Somebody else can try. Someone else can try. Those who are directly servitors of the Lord are protected by the Lord from all fearfulness, and they also enjoy the best of things, even if they are forcibly accumulated. The Lord is equal in behavior to all living beings, but He is partial to His pure devotees, being very affectionate towards them. The city of Dwarka was flourishing, being enriched with the best of things in the material world. The state assembly house is constructed according to the dignity of the particular state. In the heavenly planets, the state assembly house called Sudharma was deserving of the dignity of the best of demigods. Such an assembly house is never meant for any state on the globe because the human beings on the earth is unable to construct it. However, far a particular state may be materially advanced. However, far a particular state uh, may be materially advanced. But during the time of Lord Krishna's presence on the earth, the members of the Yadu family possibly brought the celestial assembly. house to earth and placed it at dwarka they were able to use such force because they were certain of the indulgence and protection of the supreme lord krishna in other words the lord is provided with uh, the lord is provided with the best things in the universe by his pure devotees lord krishna was provided with all kinds of comforts and facilities available within the universe by the members of the yadu dynasty and in return such servitors of lord were protected and fearless a forgetful conditioned soul is fearful but a liberated soul is never fearful just as a small child completely dependent on the mercy of his father is never fearful of anyone 
fearfulness is short of illusion for a sort of illusion for the living being when he is in slumber and forgetting his eternal relation with the lord since the living being is never to die by by his constitution as the as stated in shrimad bhagavad gita 2.20 then what is the cause of न जायते मिरते वा कदाचन न भूतवा विदेस इज दी वर्स ओके अ पर्सन मे बी फियरफुल ऑफ अ टाइगर इन ड्रीम बट अनदर मैन हु इज अवेक बाय हिज साइड सीज नो टाइगर देयर द टाइगर इज अ मिथ फॉर बोथ ऑफ देम नेमली द पर्सन ड्रीमिंग एंड द पर्सन अवेक बिकॉज़ एक्चुअली देयर इज नो टाइगर बट द मैन फॉरगेटफुल ऑफ हिज अवेकिंग लाइफ इज फियरफुल वेयर एज द मैन हु हैज नॉट फॉरगॉटन हिज पोजीशन इज नॉट एट ऑल फियरफुल thus the members of yadu dynasty were fully awake in their service to the lord and therefore there was no tiger for them to be afraid at any time even if there were a real tiger the lord was there to protect them so this is the analogy tiger in a dream is fearful while there is no tiger if you are awake there is no tiger so this is the analogy compared with the yadu vanshis they were wakeful therefore fearless so we end it here to for today anyway we are little late any question or comment uh before starting with questions or comments sir prabhu we missed your introduction in the starting when you were about to start it's, it's all right it's the introduction is, is uh, i am personally present so what is the need of introduction okay. <laughs> but uh, like now we get some time so maybe we can you know complete it because all the new year i think, I think Sure. Uh, so I'll start. We all are aware about Prabhuji and how 